think one of the most important things to understand now about the struggle for Judea and Samaria, the indigenous Jewish people who are living in our homeland there and struggling for independence, and that the superpowers of the world, the West, if it's the U.S. State Department and administration, if it's Russia, if it's the United Nations, if it's the European Union, all of these superpowers are ganging up to uh, oppress the Jewish people. Today we have a situation in which the indigenous people, the Jewish people in their homeland of Judea and Samaria, what's commonly known as the West Bank, where no other nation, no other indigenous people has ever had a king there, has ever had any type of rule there. So today people are telling us, the Jewish people, that it's not our land. And this is an outrage. And my message this evening was to come and say that through determination, through young people coming and establishing their lives and their home, come back and we're home. I have seven children that were born in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank. I have eight grandchildren who live in Judea and Samaria in the West Bank. There's people, my friends of mine, four generations already in Judea and Samaria. And that today we've reached a point where 725,000 Jews live over the Green Line. They live in the territories liberated by the Jewish people in 1967. They live in what's commonly called the West Bank. That's approximately 14% of the state of Israel. And that realization, that includes the eastern neighborhoods of Jerusalem, like Har Choma, Dilo, uh, Ramot, uh, Ramat Eshkol. So today, that realization is sinking in to those intellectuals on what's called the left. And even the Arabs were starting to realize it's over. There's not a chance anymore to establish an independent foreign entity like a Palestinian state in our homeland there just by virtue of the numbers. What are you going to do with 725,000 Jews that live there? There's no alternative. They tried to uproot uh, some 10,000 Jews from Gaza and it was a colossal failure. There was an investigative committee set up to try and understand where it went wrong. That was 10,000 Jews. Here you're talking about 725,000 Jews that live in the eastern neighborhoods of Jerusalem, all of the West Bank, spread out throughout the islands, throughout the, the Jewish towns and villages there. So I brought in this evening some selected quotes from intellectuals like Yossi Sarid, like Miron bin Benitzi, by others who have conceded defeat and said, we've got to start talking about a one-state solution. And even Arabs, like the son of Mahmoud Abbas in the New York Times, has said a one-state solution is not going to be a two-state solution. People who say so are disconnected from reality. So I think that's a win for us. That's a great step forward. And now we've got to focus the argument over what are we going to do with the 1.8 million Arabs that live in, in the West Bank, and to what extent and how are we going to incorporate them into our state, the Jewish state. And we don't have to be afraid of that. We can welcome them, we can open them, open our, open our, our borders to them, just like we have Israeli Arabs. They can be equal citizens. We can give them the same water, the same electricity. We support this. But there's arguments as to what extent and how, but all of that has to be the discussion now. So we invite everybody to subscribe to our email list. The address to subscribe is subscribe.israelempowered.com. Again, that's subscribe.israelempowered.com. You'll get information, you'll get some short videos about Israel, some fun, some informative videos. And we invite all of you to start to internalize the fact that we are firmly established in the West Bank, in Judea and Samaria. It's ours. It's never going to be given up to any foreign entity. We welcome you to Israel. We welcome you to contact me uh, through Israel Empowered. And be happy to show you around the Jewish state when you come to give you a tour. Thank you very much.